what strikes me the most is in my own country, in Spain, it has been a very extreme uh, case of low fertility and uh, the lowest uh, was in about uh, 1993, uh, 1995 with only 1.15 children per woman. And so they say that's terrible when these children arrive to the age of uh, entering the labor market. There is going to be a big shortage and uh, that would be very bad for the country. Okay, so now these children have already 16, 17, 18, 19 years and uh, they have uh, 50% unemployment. So what is the shortage of labor that, uh, that was going to suppose? So I think that uh, one of the main problems is considering demography separately from all the other aspects of the society. Of course, demography is important, but what about the economic situation mm -hmm. of the country, of the world as a whole? So I think that many of the fallacies come for considering demographic uh, aspects separately from the rest. I don't know if it's a problem for society or for economy, probably the normal thing is to, to, to think it's a problem, but uh, that depends on the situation. If now we, if in 1993 the number of births had been, let, let's say, 50% higher, mm -hmm. the unemployment problem now would be much worse. Mm -hmm. But still, I think that having uh, almost one child per couple is too few, not for society, but for people themselves. When you have very few children, the network of uh, relatives and kinship diminishes, gets much, much poorer, and uh, clearly this number of children is much below the wishes expressed by what? possible parents. So I think that very low fertility is not good for persons, is not good for families, and so it's not good for societies. Most of the governments at this moment are not worried about family matters, but about budget and deficits and so on. So in my own country, where it was very difficult to have politicians admit that families had to be helped, now with the crisis, all the measures of for helping families that had been taken in the years before had been radically suppressed. Mm -hmm. And even some other rights that were not considered to be family friendly, but they, they were, uh, are also suppressed. So what's the use of telling the politicians what to do when they cannot listen? If you consider that uh, a family of two, well, I mean a couple, mm. and they need to have two surviving children surviving to adult age, one each, I mean one man and one woman, so that uh, the man keeps being a breadwinner and the woman a housewife. But if then suddenly you change the rules and the housewife becomes a breadwinner, then you don't need two children. You, uh, because, in fact, for a certain time you wouldn't need any children because the mother has taken in advance the place of the son. Mm -hmm. So during the time where women take the places in the labor market in this very schematic way, you don't need that much fertility. Mm -hmm. But when everyone is in the labor market, then you need to replace individuals more or less one by one. Mm -hmm. So you need again, it's not that you want to have children, it is also that children are needed. I think that in a way parents feel what the market is demanding out of them. It's not that they are serve the market, but they have the idea that they are producing children that have a future or not. Mm -hmm. And if they feel that there is a future for their children, they have children. And if they feel there is no future, they don't have. Now the problem is that children don't go to the market just after the moment they are produced, but it takes 
15, 20, 25 years, and in those many years, many things can happen. So the uncertainty, uncertainty in the parents' predictions is very high. Um, but, uh, Who could predict what is happening now? I mean, you know that some banks were rating it IAEA the day before they just they bankrupt. So I think this is going to be always a risky mm. initiative having children. But uh, it has always been even worse than now, and people never stopped having children. So perhaps genetic or something.